When we get all excited on release dates and buy top of the line products, sometimes our eyes and desires are bigger than our wallets. A few days later we inevitably send it back to Apple, even though it hurts. Well, for some of us who patience is a virtue, we eventually stumble on that product on the Apple refurbished website, having got a new shell, a good, clean and new battery. After obsessively stalking the Apple website for months, people of the internet, it's finally here. The amount of hype surrounding these computers has been through the roof, and I finally get to own one six months later. Hello and welcome to the value space. In this video, I'll be unboxing, giving you my first impressions and a review of the refurbished 14-inch M1 MacBook Pro. So buckle up and let's go for the ride. Kicking off with the specs. For starters, what is this M1 chip causing a lot of frenzy in the tech world? Well, I'm here to tell you the frenzy is real and to address the elephant in the room. First and foremost, the M1 isn't a CPU. In a nutshell, it's a chip that combines the computer's CPU, GPU, I.O. and Neural Engine in a single SoC with unified memory and therefore enabling the computer to cut through intensive workflows that were once impossible on the Intel-based computers. The M1 14-inch MacBook Pro best model comes with an 8-core CPU, 14-core GPU, 16GB of unified memory and a 512 solid-state drive. Hang on a second, I know you're already asking, is that all? That in itself is some really good firepower, but there's a twist to the tell. The M1 Pro chip can be spec'd up to a 10-core CPU, a 16-core GPU and up to 64GB of unified memory. Of course, all this entirely resting on your budget, which takes us to the next thing, the price. Long before we are clicking the place your order button, most often than not, the price debate is usually a foregone conclusion. Which brings me to the next question. Why did I choose a refurbished M1 MacBook Pro? A brand new 14-inch M1 MacBook Pro with a 10-core CPU, 16-core GPU and 16GB of unified memory and 1TB solid-state drive goes for about 3749 Australian dollars. For my fans over in the US, 2669 American dollars. Whereas a refurbished one with the same specs goes for 3,369 Australian dollars, which is about 2,399 American dollars. Not that big of a difference on the price point, but that 300 could go towards accessories or any other things you may like. Alright, let's have a look at the unboxing and first impressions. And here we have it. You have no idea how satisfying that was. Taking a closer look, the box looks different from the brand new version. On the brand new version, you get a picture of a MacBook whereas with a refurbished, it's only the MacBook Pro and Apple Certified refurbished in writing. Flipping it around, we've got the Apple logo on the side, under the back of the box, we've got the specs written down. In case you missed it, this is the 14-inch M1 MacBook Pro with a 10-core CPU, 16-core GPU, 16GB of unified memory and a 1TB solid-state drive. But I know you guys are more interested about what's inside. Let's have a look. Opening up, we have the 14-inch MacBook Pro in a very similar paper to what we saw last year. Pulling it out of the box and taking the paper off, the weight and design different is quite noticeable. There it is, the 14-inch M1 MacBook Pro in space grey. Taking a closer look, it just looks brand new, no fingerprints, no scratches or dents inside. Putting it aside, the box has the usual Apple accessories. Inside, we have the Apple Guide in a much larger size. Flipping it open, Apple continued to deliver the Apple stickers, this time in black. Moving on, we have this charging brick delivering up to 67 watts of power. Something to note though, those with the M1 Max get the 96 power watt adapter. The charging cable is a USB-C to MagSafe with a length of 2 meters and a great thickness to it, highlighting the fact that Apple replaced the old USB-C cable from the previous generation, which makes me happy because I was so excited to see MagSafe making a comeback, having last seen it on the 2017 MacBook Air. In addition to that, Apple switched to the nicely woven cables from the ones with a plastic outer ring. 
That's not all though, if you choose not to use the MagSafe, you can still charge it using the Thunderbolt ports. Putting it all aside, it's time to jump on the design and I must say it just looks amazing. Kicking off with the all new aluminum enclosure which optimizes space for more performance features. Taking a closer look, we can't help but notice the bump up in size coming in at 15.5mm thin. This is a clear indication that Apple has moved away from the slimmer and more tapered design of the previous gen. Diving deeper into this new chassis, we see the return of the HDMI port, SD slot and MagSafe. Turning it around, I'm guessing Apple thought it would look better fitting the MacBook Pro logo underneath. However, this time it's engraved on the chassis. We now have rounded corners, a thicker, more robust enclosure that Apple claims to be made with 100% recycled aluminum. Opening it up, the MacBook starts automatically. Inside, you'll find the usual paper that protects the screen and from the get-go, the hinges feel a lot sturdier and stronger in my opinion. Lifting it up, it definitely feels a lot heavier than the previous gen MacBooks, coming in at 1.6 kilograms or 3.5 pounds, which is pretty heavy but nothing you won't get used to with time. The next of you seeing is setting it up. Over here, it's the same old procedure we've been accustomed to from the previous gen models. I'll go ahead and quickly set this up. For those who've owned Apple computers in the past, after you set up the language, region, accessibility and data privacy, it will ask you if you'd like to migrate from a different machine. The rest is pretty pedestrian. Having a closer look at the camera, now more than ever communicating has gone virtual, especially after the start of COVID. Having a good camera helps us stand out on Zoom meetings. The 14-inch MacBook Pro comes with a 1080p camera, which has drastically improved the video quality and its low-light performance is something to write home about. I can't help but notice the reduced bezels on the side and the inclusion of a notch for the camera. Even though the addition of a notch has caught some slack, in my opinion, this new design display is next level and for few good reasons. First off, this new design gives you more screen real estate that macOS takes full advantage of by raising the menu bar further up and automatically wrapping it around the notch to give you more room for your content. And boy, how good does it look in dark mode. I'm pretty sure all pro users would marvel at this. Let me know with the hashtag dark mode if you truly like it. Moving on, this new design comes with a much larger display coming in with an expansive 14.2 inches active area and a total of 5.9 million pixels which is more pixels than the previous gen 16 inch MacBook Pro. Next up is a new technology that's caused ripples in the notebook world, ProMotion, which creates refresh rates of up to 120 hertz. For those who don't understand tech jargon, ProMotion automatically adapts to the motion of your content. For instance, when your content is static, the refresh rate drops down to preserve battery life. In addition, it steps up to make tasks like scrolling through web pages battery smooth and digital creators like myself can choose a standard refresh rate when they need to lock one in. It also supports 1 billion colors for ultra smooth gradings and for the first time, its liquid retina XDR display which enables users like me create, edit and review HDR content with needle-like precision. Last but not least, the display has a state-of-the-art backlight featuring thousands of mini-LEDs arranged in individually controlled local dimming zones. This enables up to an astonishing 1000 nits of sustained brightness, 1600 nits of peak brightness and a mind-boggling 1 million to 1 contrast ratio. All of that simply summarized as extreme dynamic range, which brings HDR content to life with unbelievable detail. I know it's going to be amazing whether I'm putting in final touches in the editing suit or when I decide to kick back and watch my favorite movies or documentaries. All this lining up for an uncompromising display experience and performance. Moving down, the keyboard captivated me with the all new black anodized aluminum inset and no matter what model you order, there's no longer a touch bar integration on it. The black anodized inset elegantly highlights the backlit clips on the keys. The function keys now include Siri, Dictation, new shortcuts for Spotlight and Do Not Disturb. All these keys add into the usual shortcuts for brightness, volume, 
media playback and a new design for the fingerprint ID which reads your finger like a chamon spell and is still snobby. I find it super convenient as it saves me precious seconds typing in my password whenever I want to log into the computer. As cool as it looks, I wanted to try the keys myself and I must admit I like the tactile feel although it's nothing compared to a mechanical keyboard. Moving further down, the keyboard is complemented by an expansive force trackpad. Upon testing it, I can immediately tell it's way different in terms of touch and haptic feedback. I mean, just listen to this. Moving towards the side, this beast of a machine comes with industry leading studio quality mics, which allows up to 60% low noise flow. That means I can get crystal clear recordings that capture the subtlest of sounds. Moving on to the speakers, the M1 Pro has a 6 speaker system that features 2 tweeters and 4 force cancelling woofers. Coming in at nearly twice the size, the tweeters purify sound, mids and highs for a clear sound stage. The woofer diaphragms are also larger and have increased range of motion to enable them to displace more air, therefore delivering 80% more bass and can now go half an octave deeper, revealing a range of notes we previously couldn't hear. It also supports spatial audio which creates three-dimensional soundstage. I can resoundingly attest to that, having listened to music, watched a few movies with Dolby Atmos, comparing it with my old MacBook. In short, the experience is theater-like. For those who don't know, this speaker sound system cuts across the 14-inch and 16-inch MacBook Pros. Moving on to performance. The reason why I upgraded to the MacBook Pro was mainly because of performance and its form factor which would enable me work on my edits even when I'm not in the office. Diving deeper into performance, the 14-inch M1 MacBook Pro compared to the Intel Best 13-inch Core i7 MacBook Pro has up to 3.7 times faster CPU performance. Moving on to how it handles graphics, and not just simple graphics, I'm talking about up to 8K resolution footage and the speeds are just astonishing, mind you not setting off the fans in the process. If I try that on the 13-inch MacBook Pro, it would probably go up in flames. All that getting done in the 14-inch MacBook Pro with speeds that are up to 9 times faster with the M1 Max coming at a mind-boggling speed that is up to 13 times faster. So whether it's a super graphic intense timeline on Premiere Pro or an intense editing session on Lightroom Classic, the 14-inch MacBook Pro absolutely tears it to shreds and it goes even farther. The unified memory architecture enables workflows that were once unimaginable in a notebook. Finishing off with the storage, the super fast SSDs deliver up to a jaw dropping 7.4 gigabytes per second of read speeds, more than twice the speed of the previous gen SSDs. These speeds have enabled me cut across timelines faster, transfer footage insanely quick without any hiccups. And you can take this to the bank. Any content creator will tell you there is no better feeling than that. Moving on to the battery and charging. The magic of the 14-inch MacBook Pro is that despite being extremely powerful, they are remarkably power efficient. Pro users like me benefit from the super fast performance whether I'm plugged in or not. The battery life is just incredible. That will for sure come in handy when I'm out shooting content and editing on the go. For everyday users, the 14-inch model delivers up to 17 hours of video playback. Moving on, it also supports fast charge, charging up to 50% in just 30 minutes. To sum it all up, for the first time I can say, Apple have made a machine that is next level. Whether it can keep up with the ever-changing landscape, more so for creators remains to be a question of time. People of the internet, I'm signing out. See you on the next one.